Folks, we are one year old. Yeah. Good service is officially one Thank year you guys. old. Woo. Shout out to all the stewards that have been following the journey since day one. There are some day oneers out there. We love yeah, you guys. Shout out to all you guys. Anybody who's just kind of come on board, welcome to the party. We love you guys. Um, all the the comments. The, the follows, the shares, all of that. Uh, we read all that. We see all of it. We're so blessed by it. We're so encouraged. And we have so much more coming up in our That's second right. year. Uh, we have amazing guests, uh, new guests, as well as returning guests. We got live events coming up this year. Patreon is on and popping. We're going to have a lot more dope content just for our Patreon subscribers. If you guys don't, uh, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube, make sure you get onto our YouTube where you get to see all of our delicious food and all that good stuff. Man, you know, to be super transparent, when we started this a year ago, uh, we had no idea what we are doing. <laughs> We had no plan, no script, no nothing. And, you know, God just really breathed on every yes. single episode. And if you haven't seen our little clip about prayer commenting, but every time we pray before every episode, we say we're just doing this for the one listener. And we mean that every single podcast It's not about like growth strategy, making money, doing this or that or the other. It's really just about us sharing our lives, other people's lives, and how we're all walking with God so y'all don't feel alone out there. And it's for the one listener that it impacts, and we still care about that person every single time we record. So we just wanted to say thank okay, thank you to everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks this a is lot. to you guys, to all of our students. <laughs> we love you guys. God bless y'all. Welcome to Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben Chung. And Kevin's up. Each week, we'll be bringing you real, raw, and vulnerable talks about life, faith, and everything in between, and always over a fire meal. Pull up a chair. Let's eat. What's up, everybody? Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben. And Kevin. And today, we are doing a catch-up, a long overdue catch-up. Um... Kev, you were gone in Korea for a month. Yes. So we, we didn't record for the entire month of June. Yeah. And I'm sure there is a ton for us to catch up on. There's so much. There is so much. Um, and you know what? It is our one year birthday, guys. Hey. It is Good Services one year birthday. One we year. started we started rolling July of last year, and uh, we got cupcakes to celebrate. Cupcakes. So this is to all the stewards out there who have been rocking with us for a year, and uh, we love you guys. We appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for the growth. Our growth has been insane, dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to go for the first bite reflection for our cupcake because this is we're going to go reverse go. order. We're going dessert first. There you go. So... First bite reflection, <laughs> we were, I don't know, you said that maybe you and I might have something, uh, maybe the same thought, but here's what I was, here's what I was thinking, man. I was praying right before we started rolling. Yeah. Um, you were in, in Korea for a year. Um, you, you, were, you gave me a couple of updates while we were, you were mm -hmm, out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. So like, and, and stuff's been going on here back at home. There's always stuff happening. Yeah. So. I felt like as I was praying, the Lord was, um, the word changes came to mind. Like mm. what's changing right now in your life? Yeah. Like what is changing? What's changed or what is changing in your life right now? Yeah, it's good. And um, I don't know, was that, was that totally? Uh, it is right in the wheelhouse of okay. talking about what's new. But, oh, yeah. there you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Changing what's new. Love All right. that. Love cool. that. So right Thank in the God. wheelhouse. Thank you, guys. Cool. Hey. So shout out to, yeah. Up. Happy birthday. Shout out to Sprinkles Cupcakes. Yeah. And uh, I'm not even sure which. This looks like a chocolate. Yeah, I oh, think this, this is, is just chocolate, chocolate on right. chocolate on chocolate. Chocolate on chocolate. chocolate. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Woo. Sprinkles. Sugar to the dome. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that'll wake you up. What's been changing? Yeah, what's been changing? Well, on that note, I'm going to go right in because that's the first time I had sugar in like four weeks. <laughs> oh, dang. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I did something uh, super 
interesting. Uh, a lot of people do this when they go out of the country uh, because, you know, I have my opinions on our healthcare system. Mm hmm. It sucks here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, when I went to Korea, um, it was so affordable to do a full body checkup. I did that. And, um, you know, I'm 37 years old for anyone that was wondering. And when you do a checkup like that, um, you just never know what's wrong, you know. And there was a lot going on. I'm not going to put all my private stuff on the air, but I am a bigger guy. I've seen some comments, some nice ones and some not so nice ones about my health which is fine. Thank you for everyone that was so concerned. Oh, the comment section. <laughs> oh, the comment section. <laughs> but um, but I want to take it seriously for my family. It's more of something that I've been praying about for a year. Um, choosing a different food and health lifestyle is not easy. For anyone that's listening, uh, if anyone's bigger that's listening, yo, I feel you. Like, being a bigger person comes with so much, actually, that's not talked about too often because people think you should just go run and change your diet. As if it's As just if that it's, easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. like, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. You're just weak or mm -hmm. lazy or so many different harsh words that are spoken to larger folks. Mm -hmm. And it's all good, though, because, you know, we've we've heard it over so long since our childhood that a lot of bigger folks they're showing a lot of patience and kindness when you mm. have comments like yeah, that yeah, yeah 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 and when people do comment we brush it off we smile and we go you know they don't really understand the struggle now that being said i do want to say it is possible for anybody that's out there i know it feels impossible it feels like you've tried everything but through prayer petition and patience god gave me the willingness finally mm. and amen and as he gave me the willingness, I just had to show up in obedience. And he showed me that, Kevin, you know, you're learning how to steward your life better. You're learning how to steward your career, your money, your uh, children, your family. You're managing it for me because it's all from God. Yeah. And but he just made me look in the mirror and go, you haven't been stewarding your health, mm. you know, because even in health, um, you have to manage that. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, I took that for uh, granted for a long time. I'm in the food industry, so it's hard, but I made up a ton of excuses. But finally, when I came face to face with not that I have to lose weight because of, oh, I'm going to die, not to just say, oh, I have to do this for my kids or my family. It was really like, man, I've been so irresponsible. Mm. That hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm. Like, yeah. like, look at me being given this lease on life and I'm squandering my health. I'm abusing it. Mm -hmm. Just like anything else God gives me, I could abuse it. Right. And I was abusing it. I was abusing my health by eating literally anything on the planet whenever I wanted, right? And exercising just if I felt like it or whatever it was. And I was just abusing my body and I wasn't treating it like the temple that it needed to be. Um, and it's, it was very, it was a point of ego that I had to face. Mm -hmm. And I got to do that while I was in Korea. Um, and it was great because in that reflection, um, I was able to see with some help and encouragement from God and family that I could, you know, get a new lease on life in that sense for health. That's and dope, so, man. Yeah, man. I'm proud of you, bro. Thanks, I, man. I know this is probably been a lifelong journey. Like mm -hmm. it hasn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's something that you said since you were a child, yeah. you know, you were kind of always on the bigger side. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was, you know, I was also pretty like chubby kid growing up most of my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was about like 35 pounds overweight, you sure, know, sure, and like, yeah. Um, yeah, I was sick of the sick of the criticism <laughs> yeah. i mean it was also just toxic like you know yeah, like it's my toxic. It's my toxic. parents would even yeah, like yeah. call me fat mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. and i was just traumatized i'm just like f you i'm gonna lose all this weight watch yeah, and then yeah, like it was yeah. just so it maybe was motivated by not the best things but you know once sure. i was able to like do it and keep it off i was like oh shoot this is this is much better um but i know that takes a lot of um takes a great deal of humility mm. to examine yourself to that level especially yeah. when you've 
like your whole life has been with that mindset of like, oh, it's okay because of this or sure. like, oh, like whatever, yeah. like that doesn't yeah. bother me because of blah, blah, blah. Right, right. And then, you know, what What I would love to just even encourage you with slash give you your flowers for is, you know, when, you, when they say like the older we get, we get set in our ways yeah. and it's like you can't teach old dog new tricks. Like that's just called pride. That's just called <laughs> ego. That, that just, that, like is. that's like saying that like mm-hmm. I cannot let go of my sin. Right. As if Jesus didn't die for my pride and my ego to be put to death as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of humility and a great deal of reverence and um, faith that like Mm. Jesus has this too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like there is Mm -hmm. no part of our life that Jesus is like, yeah, I didn't die for that part of your life. You know what I mean? That, that, that thing that you struggle with, like, yeah, that one's going to kind of stay with you. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, man, there's there's a lot there. And I, I'll say for me, it's something similar. You know, I, I would say that, um, you know, it's funny. I just was talking to Pastor Scott as we right before we started rolling. Yeah. And, you know, he's been out with an injury for a while. So it's my first time seeing him back for uh, since uh, a few months ago. And he, he just kind of was like, hey, I've been praying for you. And I'm like, oh, mm. cool. And he's like. God's got some really big things he's planning for you. He's like, I just, wow. I just sense that for you. And he's wow. like, I've just been praying. I want to encourage you. Mm. And I was like, you know what, Scott? Like I received that because God's been showing me that too. Like he's mm. been showing me like there are new things happening in your life. Yeah. And there are new things that are going to happen that you probably would have never imagined. Yeah. And some of that is scary. Um, it's exciting. And, um, and he was even encouraging me. He was like, yes, yeah, some things that you may have never experienced, but like yeah. God doesn't want you to be afraid. <laughs> I'm like, well, there's a, there's a, a, there's a little bit of a tension there. Right. It's yeah. like when yeah. you call, call to something new, you're like, Oh, well, like what if I don't know how to do it? You know? Right. It's like, yeah, right. that's why you rely on God. Yeah. And so with that too, I'm just like, I, God's been showing me like yesterday was an interesting day where I was just like, kind of like back and forth with the Lord and just in my own like quiet space of like God just kind of nudging at me there. Mm. He was like saying to get into this new season, you got to operate different. Yeah. You know, and it's not behavior modification. It's not like just stop doing this, right. just do this more. Mm-hmm. I think what the Lord was sh- was sharing or showing me was um, slash is like you have to have utter reliance on me, like extreme <laughs> reliance yeah, on me yeah. because the things that you want to change in your life, you can't do this by willpower. You That's can't right. just like muscle your way through to like get to this other side. Yeah. And I, I believe that God is inviting me to a, in a partnership with him, like mm-hmm. partner with me. Mm-hmm. Like good. it's going to require you to, to, to step up to it and it's going to require you to say yes, but rely upon me for the things to change that's right and even my understanding of like bro like i didn't realize like the level of theology that i feel like the lord has just baked within me where like Mm -hmm. things are just like coming out now and i'm having these conversations where you know i I just served up at my church's youth camp and like um you know i got the senior boys to you know the that i had to counsel yeah and you know two of them were not believers and Mm -hmm. um they were asking some very challenging questions, like very. What was the most challenging? Question? Legit, there must have been. My guy like was Ooh. like, "So predestination. So then, okay. if everything's pre-planned, what's the point of even trying?" Yeah, and what I was, did, "What did you say?" I was like, "Well, that's a great question." I was like, yeah. "Okay, let's." So, I mean, I, there's like obviously like the longer explanation of like, okay, if God is truly all-knowing, if He's omniscient, of course He knows everything, right? Sure, but. We don't know the mind of God, but we do know what scripture says is that he desires for all men to get saved, for all men to come to know him. Mm -hmm. So we know the heart of the father is for all people. We in our finite, us being here on earth, Mm -hmm. we don't know whether I am called or I am chosen or not. We don't know that. God may know Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. he knows everything, right? He just knows how everything's going to play out. Yeah. But we know, but more than what we, what God knows we don't know that, but we know his heart because his heart mm-hmm. is revealed to us in his word. His, mm-hmm. his word says, I desire for all men. So does yeah. that not include you? 
If you are here right now, or we're having this conversation, yeah. if his heart in his word says he desires for all, does that not also include you? So mm-hmm. now that you and I are here in this moment of conversation, mm-hmm. what does that mean to you? Right. Like, are you going to be like, well, I don't know if it's already pre-planned. Like, let me just throw it all out. Like, how irresponsible would that be? Like, right. that's almost that's just a cop out. That's like saying, well, I don't know. Therefore, let's just throw it all away. So you're willing to just throw away eternity at the and the possibility for eternal mm. life because you don't know something. Sure. And and the other that, that was just one of the many questions. But yeah. like the what it boiled down to. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was like giving and that not like a, as a safety net for me. But what I felt like the Lord was telling me was like, hey, bro, even if you have every answer, mm. like, let's just say you don't get stumped once. Yeah. Do you think that's going to save this person? Mm-hmm. Of course not. Like you answering every question will not save somebody. It's the Holy Spirit's work. Yeah. Right. You could have so many questions right. and still believe because the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of your heart transforms it the scales will fall off your eyes you 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 had now have ears to hear eyes to see yeah you know and it's like whoa there's a transformation happening yeah. and i'm seeing it happen all around me like i'm you know as i'm social media like i'm seeing like these celebrities that are just like yes and a, a friend of mine recently Wild. too like i'm i'm praying from i won't even say his name but like i saw him post something on on uh, ig yesterday where he was like i don't know all signs keep pointing me to like christ but I'm not sure, is Christ the only way to God? Tell me what you think in the comments. And I was like, bro, what? But the thing is, I've been watching his journey for the last (laughs) couple of years, and I'm like, I feel like the Lord's working on this guy's heart. He's not saying Jesus and stuff. He'll say God and stuff like that here in in the comments. But yesterday it was like, I feel like all signs are pointing me to Christ. But the thing that I'm messed with right now is, is Christ the only way to God? I'm just Mm. curious what you think. Mm. Hey, that's a great question to wrestle with, you know? And that's that process. And like, and I think going back to all of it too, um, process, sanctification is years and years of walking with the Lord. Point of conversion is, yeah, we get saved when we encounter the Holy Spirit. We understand who Jesus is and we give our lives to him. But the years of walking it out That's is right. where, like, um, I, I, I heard this quote the other day is that um, that Christianity starts at conversion, but that's not where it ends. Right. Like we get converted and then we walk through a life of that's walking right. with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's work to be done. There's, you yeah. know, um, you know, we're called to the Great Commission and all these other things. So like that sanctification process is something that I'm like, wow, Lord, um, here I am at 42 going on 43 years old Mm -hmm. and I look at all my, you know, the journey that I've come, like I see your presence in all of that. And we can only see it in hindsight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I think what's changing in me is that like the call is becoming clearer. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I only want to respond to the call now. Yeah. Like before I had other agenda items, I'm like, all right, God, like, yeah, you're there in my life. You're important. Yeah. Like you're important, but also this is important. And also this is important, but I'm like, nah, dude, just the call. You got rid of the, this and bro. (laughs) It's just the call (laughs) this, but, and I know that God takes care of everything else that I need. He supplies all of our needs and all of that as we need it. That's right. Um, so dude, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really stoked on where I'm at, uh, where God is taking me, where God is taking you. And speaking of which, I'm, we're getting into the food, uh, this part of the meal, because oh, yes, we, yes. we did there sprinkles. but like part of the meal. Which is a much healthier selection than what we would normally yes. get into. Speaking of health earlier. Yeah, what is this, This is bro? called the Blue Salt Fish Grill. It's in Redondo Beach. And uh, right now we have the ahi tuna with some broccolini and coleslaw. Oh, so ahi. Super healthy. I actually switched a lot of my red meat out mm. for fish. Dude, that's and, a good ahi. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. I can't wait to say, you know what? I'm just going to... And some coleslaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. that's solid. That just tastes like solid. steaks. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very solid. It's great. So, dude, like, give me some maybe, like, highlight, top mm-hmm. three in Korea, like, some of the things that outside of the, the health discovery stuff, but, mm-hmm. like, how did you feel like you encountered the Lord or the Lord encountered you? Yeah, One of the first lessons that hit me like a ton of bricks right when I started a vacation. I don't know how many y'all take vacations. I don't know if um, 
Is that part of your regular routine with family and whatnot? But for the long, this is my first time. I feel like I was so sober minded. Right. Mm. And what I mean by that is just having a lot of clarity of thought going into it because within day three of my vacation with my family in a whole nother country, I was so irritable. Mm. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm mad at my kids. I'm mad at my wife. We're fighting over the, some weird stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I fighting the people that I love? I don't even fight them at home. Like mm. I haven't got an argument with my wife in like a year or something. Mm -hmm. And here I am like, we're not arguing, but I'm starting to get like irritable at her. Mm. And my love for her is like, it's there, but I'm getting annoyed. And I'm like, why am I feeling like this? And then I realized I was off rhythm with God. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing my meditation, my mm -hmm. reading, my connection with the Holy Spirit. I was just living. Mm -hmm. And I thought vacationing men, vacationing off of my entire schedule. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, word uh, of warning, do not do that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, and plan just like how you plan an itinerary of like, where you want to go, what do you want to see, like your list of things you want to sightsee and eat or whatever, I highly recommend scheduling time with God in that vacation. Yeah. I never even thought about doing that in the past, but I had to do it. By, by the first week, I was like, all right, enough. Yeah. I got to schedule God into my schedule, this new schedule, mm -hmm. even in the vacation, or I'm just off kilter, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even do life without Jesus no more. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's insane. Like I just can't. And so that was very humbling. <laughs> you know, that's such a good point. I think there is a very, um, I don't know, maybe it's not talked about enough that like, for whatever reason, when we travel, we struggle a lot. Um, on a spiritual level Yep. because you're literally uprooting yourself from home That's and right. breaking every single normal rhythm that you would have at home. You're like probably in a hotel room. Yep. Um, and, and let's just be real. Like if we're traveling alone, there's like temptation for all kinds of weird, mm -hmm. stupid things, right? Mm -hmm. That you, you somehow think that you're on vacation. So therefore you're on vacation from life. Like <laughs> I could just like not yep. be responsible the way that I, I would be like, I could, you know, yeah. Like kind of, uh, fudge a little bit on what I would normally eat. I'm like, oh, I'm on vacation. I don't need to work out, you know, like, oh, like I'm on vacation. Like I don't need to pray <laughs> and open my Bible, <laughs> you know? And like, um, there was this pastor that he was giving a sermon. I mean, he was t talking about the sermon was on like tithes and offerings, Yeah. but he was like, um, how many of you, when you're on vacation, so is your tithe and offering AKA why well, I didn't go to church this Sunday. So I don't need to give it to the Lord. I was on vacation. Mm. So it's like, is your tithes and offerings also on vacation? AKA like, is your, is your allegiance right. to the Lord also on vacation when you are away from home? Right. And, and that's where the enemy would love to have us, right? Like, Hey, it's okay. Enjoy. Like this is a freebie. Yep. You know, what I mean? Ooh, those freebies are freebies, dangerous, bro. bro. That freebies, is a dangerous bro. freebie. And, um, no, bro, I, I mean, it totally makes sense. Like, you know, when you're, yeah, when you're off your normal rhythm, mm -hmm. um, you're in a foreign place, things are foreign. And then, so it, it has to come with intention where it's like, nope, I got to schedule in my Jesus time. That's right. You know, and, and, um, make sure that that doesn't take a back seat. Yep. You know what I mean? So usually when I write, I write verses down that like help me through, these types of moments in my life uh, lately. Cause it's just, it's, and I like to title it mm -hmm. like for myself. It's not titled like this in scripture, but I'll title yeah, it for yeah, me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it's easy to read something. And I realize out of all the times I've heard this passage, I never wrote it down for myself, mm -hmm. but finally I needed it. Not when I was in the workplace, not when I was out there in the seedy world of entertainment, not when I was like facing a bunch of folks that hate Jesus. I never needed it then, mm -hmm. but the first time I needed this passage was on vacation. Wow. Cause there's so much temptation of just being lazy and doing nothing that I had to write down Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, which is the armor of God. Mm. Like 
Yep. If y'all need Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, I'm not going to read all 10 of these, but just keep this with you. This yeah. goes through everything you literally need. It just talks about the entire head to foot arm of God and the protection that it provides. Mm. It's nuts. And so I just keep this on me yeah. now and I'll read it to myself. Mm -hmm. And it was because I needed it on vacation. <laughs> You know, it's dope. So I listened to this um, daily podcast. Mm -hmm. um, it's called uh, The Morning Mindset. Nice. And um, it's a pastor. It's a daily podcast. It's like a, um, anywhere from like a three to seven minute quick little uh, bite size. Oh, nice. And of course, that whole entire month of June, he was going through the armor of God. So every morning he would go through uh, one section of the armor of God. And I was like, Amazing. oh, Lord, this this is so good. I need so this. And so like, yeah, bro. And that's the thing too, even coming out off of, cause I just got back from this, our, our youth camp um, a couple of weeks ago. And like, I was so just like on fire, dude. I was like, Lord, you're all I care about. I just want these kids to get saved and all the things, right? <laughs> and yeah. then that week when I come back, struggling. Prayer life's dry, mm. just like struggling. And I was like, Lord, what happened? You know, and like, and then, you know, I just had to get back to it, like reminding myself, going back to the armor of God. And, you know, the, the, the dope thing about Jesus is that like, okay, yes, Jesus hates sin, point blank period. He, he hates yep. sin. There's no, there's no gray area about that. Yep. To the point where he knew that the only way was that he would lay down his life for it. He hates sin. He died for us because he loves us so much. And like the, and I'm again, not to make excuse for sin, but I think we shame, we, we like want to shame ourselves. Yeah. Like we want to feel like, oh man, I, I suck, dude. Like mm -hmm. I'm a bad Christian. Mm -hmm. Like I sinned yeah. and like, you know, and then we, we kind of get into this discouraged funk and it's just like, ah, oh, man, all right, I don't even want to show up to that thing today because I'm just, you know, I yeah. struggle with this, yeah. blah, 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 I messed up in that. And it's like, do you think that Jesus really looks at you that way? Mm. Like, do you think that he's really like, man, I died for that, bro. What's, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm pretty certain yeah. he does not look no. at you that way. No. And, um... You know, yeah, just as I would imagine, like as you're, you know, you being a father when your kids mess up and they disappoint you, they probably did something mm -hmm. to disobey you yeah. and all that. Yeah. And you may even like sit them down and have a stern talk with them. Yeah. But you always restore. Right. You always like, hey, I love you. You know, like it's never like like I don't want to talk to you for a week. Right. Like you would never do that to right. your sons. Right? right. Right. And. And that and like how much more does Jesus come in and show us love and compassion? And um, so like praise God that, you know, even in that like sort of week after I came back from camp and I was like on this high and I was like, oh, Lord, yeah. I'm struggling. My prayers are so dry. And and then I Holy Spirit was very quick to be. Like, Look, I am very much mm -hmm. here the same way, same way I was with you up at camp. When yeah. you were like in tears and you felt my presence up there, I'm w I'm with you right here, right now. Right. And and then you know he would remind me of like yeah. his father fatherhood to me, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. my my sonship to him. Mm -hmm. And it was it's just like, oh Lord, this is a forever thing. Like yeah. we're not going anywhere, you know. And That's then so he just invites you into deeper intimacy and um, that daily walk, man. It's it's so good to just. Let the Lord, like, show you and guide you in that. What's up, Stewards? Thank you guys so much for supporting Good Service. If you guys love what we do, then become a Patreon subscriber. As a Patreon subscriber, you get exclusive content every single week. From Q&As to solo reflection rounds, extended episodes, spicy takes, vlogs, and so much more, you're going to find all of that exclusively on our Patreon. Log on to patreon.com slash goodservice. Thank you guys so much for your support. Back to the episode. And I think there's uh, something that you mentioned about 
how there is this like big moment with God at this uh, retreat site and then coming back down and then, you know, feeling like a little dry season right after that. And one of the things that um, that <laughs> my lovely wife, because she I, I truly believe she has the gift of wisdom because mm. um, sometimes she has this like out of body experience when she like throws a random comment right in there mm -hmm. and it's always like so filled and. She says something to me because like when I got back, I um, started praying about all sorts of stuff because there's there's a lot of busyness that's mm -hmm. going on right now. And she knows that I'm, what I'm pa pa you know passionate for is like anything to do with God. I'm like, like, let's go. Yeah. Right. And anything that isn't as adjacent, it just it just feels like a lot of work. Like it's I'm, I'm kind of like not super motivated in it. Like I'm just doing it because like, I want to be diligent, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then like, so I was like kind of letting her know, like, you know, just how I felt and like what I was praying about. And then she's like, you know, sometimes, um, you just need to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't like stop chasing emotions. And she mm -hmm. was like, just focus on what, the the job that god's giving you like stop chasing for every single thing that invokes passion because you keep chasing these things kev but just chase god like you always talk about mm -hmm. and it really really challenged me because naturally of course i want to chase the emotion like of course i want to chase the passion because that's what makes me feel alive. But then after she said that, I started like sitting more through that thought of just being obedient. And I really love that too. And I'm, I'm like learning that steady rhythm of stillness, obedience without like things happening, just being with God. Mm -hmm. And man, lately when I, sit in that a little too long i'm just like in tears <laughs> yeah yeah i'm just like oh jesus that's for why? real that's for real man hey yeah. you have a you have a big event coming up yeah. i just wanted to yeah. mention that um there's been a lot of you know this kind of ties back to something we talked about earlier about the miraculous healing and the yep. teaching in the class i just wanted to know like man like how are you feeling um about this opportunity of just public performance mm. in God, you know? Yeah, well, um, so by the time this episode comes out, the event will have already have passed. But yeah, the ARC, the ARC dance event is happening. Um, first one in L.A. coming up this weekend. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm very. It's weird. I have this weird balance of very expectant. And having no expectations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's kind of how I feel. So you're feeling everything, bro. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, God, I know you're going to show up. But, like, I have no expectation for you to do X, Y, or Z. Like, you might just do a whole other thing. And, um, you know, there, there is a uh, just an honest, transparent feeling. Mm. Anytime you do an event, you want people to show up. Right. You want there to be a lot True. of people. Right. Like True. who wants to do an event with no one goes to. Right. Yep. Same. So there is this like, oh, Lord, like I hope more people show up. But then there's also like, hey, if only five people show up. Cool. Put on the best experience for those five people, because those are the five people who are supposed to be there mm. um, as if like God messed up or like God isn't as cool. And so like, right. you know, like that's why that's only why these five people showed up but like what if it was only supposed to be for five people right. like exactly so that's kind of where i'm at too like i i don't want to get so like caught up with like oh i hope a lot of people show up but yes my heart does want folks to be here because you know when i uh experienced the first one um that happened in tulsa i mean the lord absolutely encountered me there and you know, yeah, I told that story a while back on a few episodes ago, but like from, yeah, my my dislocated hip that got healed. And then, you know, God was showing me that that was an identity thing that he was trying to heal. Like, yeah. um, you know, I, I believe that was for me, not to say it was just for me, but 
the the one in Tulsa is for me. So I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, who's who's this one for? Like, mm-hmm. who are, who are you trying to speak to? Mm-hmm. Who are you trying to touch and reach out to in this one? And you know, L.A. being sort of like it's kind of like the mecca of like entertainment period but like specifically for dance like commercial dance like the la dance industry this is where all the the agencies are at and the auditions happen of you know most of the videos and all this stuff is out here in la so yeah. i've been praying over the dance industry out here and um yeah i'm praying that the lord uh start a revival you know change the dance industry change the way that um uh you know specifically like women how women are um, you know, portrayed, treated, yeah. um, you yeah. know, just in, yeah. in the industry out here. And um, so, you know, we intend for this weekend to be a time of um, dance as worship. And um, yeah, right. I believe that God's really going to move. I'm really excited. You know, we'll do like a, another recap um, yeah. a report on it. We're going to do a good service live um, there yeah, as well, yeah, which yeah. I'm really yes, excited for. Yes, we are. For. Good service. So, good um, service. yeah, man, I'm really stoked on it. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what the Lord does. Dang, man. Yeah, yeah. Dang, man. I think it's just uh, just seeing how where we were like a year ago mm. talking about, hey, we want to do this and that for God. And the fact that we don't have to do anything and he just brought all this to fruition right around us like Mm -hmm. we had visions or dreams or something like like kind of like around all this stuff but it's just happening yeah we're just like living in it i just wanted to take a moment to say you know thank you to all the listeners because um i kid you not i was talking to ben about this like a week ago i was actually crying about this you know lots of tears for these grown men (laughs) but um you know, this podcast in the small following that we have in Instagram and the growing following that we have in all the platforms, literally we reached 2 million people in Jeez. 90 days. Yeah. And we're still growing in that reach every single week. Mm-hmm. And I I just have to say, like, God's just breathing on it. Yep. And we just are being faithful and we're just showing up. We didn't even know this is where the podcast was going to go. We have no idea, but it's absolutely incredible. Uh, the people that we've been able to meet, the things that we've been able to talk about, but more importantly, we always pray for one listener. And so we're just so excited for anybody that gets anything out of what we talk about and allowing them to join the table and just hang out with us. You know what I mean? And so that's been, um, I just got to take a pause and just say thank you to everybody. Yes. Uh, it's you. just been really, really crazy. There is a question I'll ask you, Ben, because we get this question all the time. Mm-hmm. And I want to see how honest you're going to be. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be your favorite guest because that's no one likes to answer that because we've had a lot of guests on the show. And mm-hmm. I don't think it's nice to say favorite of anything, mm-hmm. but I will say there must be a memorable one that anyone that usually asks you about guests, Mm -hmm. there's must be like one or two that just comes top of mind. And I'm curious why, and why does that like resonate so fast? Top of mind. I'll just have to come top of mind. Um, he was kind of our recent guest, um, Jeff Osborne. Um, yeah. And, uh, I, you know, there it's, it's not, every day that you meet somebody and you're like yo dude you're my brother from another mother just straight up like we're cut from the same cloth yeah um i think uh i mean he and i since then because i met him the, for the first time when he came on the pod that was the first time we met yeah. and then even after we finished recording we just sat here for a minute we were just chopping it up and mm-hmm. i was just like dude i think you and i have like like lives that are just slightly off timeline, but like yeah. same trajectory. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, outside of just him just having a ton of wisdom, um, I think it's also maybe because um, it, it kind of aligns with where I'm at in my life, even in terms of like next chapter of like career mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, him being in the coaching space. Yeah. Um, yeah, I felt I just was gleaning a lot of um, wisdom off of just the things that he was saying. And so he and I are now like very good friends and we, we talk awesome. often and, um, you know, 
it, I feel like it's a mutually like we are here to mutually help each other mm-hmm. and and grow um, as brothers and as men yeah. of God first and foremost, but also um, like career wise and building out. It's good. Um, yeah, just building out where where we feel like the Lord wants to take our natural wiring and the heart that he's given us for ministry mm. and to use that to help and serve a certain type of people, uh, a certain type of like like entrepreneurs and leaders and Amazing. things like that. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I can't say, yeah, again, it's not like favorite, but it's like, yo, the most top of mind was because that, that episode really impacted me and I was like, whoa, wow. like... Yeah, so That's shout amazing. out, shout out, Jeff. We got to get him back on the pod. Seriously, Damn. seriously, I I love him, yeah. Jeff. I love you. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna throw that question back to you, man. Well, what about you? I'm a duck it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> duck impossible, uh, impossible. You cannot duck it. <laughs> uh, actually, um, it it's a it's actually like a it even surprised me when when I was like, oh, this person comes right to the top of my mind, and it's because of what was talked about which was Matt Whitlock. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, shout out it, Matt. Yeah, I love Matt Whitlock. I love what he's doing in Southern California. Uh, shout out Pastor Matt. And one thing I will say is that um, it's his passion for where he wants every Christian to be out there doing ministry work, mm-hmm. like going out there, being a disciple, and truly challenging them to go, Hey, you are also in this. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up. Like literally everyone needs you. Yeah. And that passion came through so loud in what he was talking about, what he was challenging in today's church. Mm. He was challenging like uh, not naming like certain leaders or whatever, but just the church as a whole, as an organization of what people are doing. It actually fired me up a lot more than I realized. And it kind of like lingered in my heart because I had a lot of thoughts around stirring up the hearts of men. Mm. And he's definitely someone that's doing that. And I was like, dude, I, if I could uh, do that, whether through this medium and channel or if I can stir up more hearts of men uh, one on one or whatever other way God allows me to do, um, I think Oh man, like it just really got me going. I started thinking about like the, like this, this, this imagery of like fire and like, there's like these like fire pits and there's gatherings all around the U S like things like that all spark from that episode for me. And so it's been on my heart for a minute, but yeah, I I think about all of that to land the plane on this episode. I wanted to impose a different question. The question in my mind that comes quickly is I would love to know what you are praying for that you haven't got an answer to so the audience could help pray for you. (laughs) The great question, man. All right. I'll choose. I'll choose one of the things I'm praying for. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny? Like, you know, like when something hasn't happened yet, but you know it's gonna be okay. Like that's it's right. gonna happen. Yep, that's right. So yep. that's almost uh, if so to answer that, I kind of don't have anything. Like <laughs> cause I just feel like God's like Bro, you have like thousands of people listening. I know, to this. but this is <laughs> they that can a pray for you, bro. Come okay, on. Okay, cool. Let's do this then. You know what? I'll just keep it a hundo. Let's keep it a buck right now. I feel that when When you need something, God will give you that thing, right? When you need it. Amen. And um, most often, now, oh, let me just, this might just be the, let me just be bold and say it. You'll never, God will never call you into your full calling without teaching you who you are first, right? Mm -hmm. He -hmm. teaches you who you are first, aka your identity. Yep. And then he calls you into the thing. Because why would he call you into something where you're like, you don't even know who you are. What are you going to do right. here? That's right. So I feel that the Lord has made it very clear to me who I am. And he's like, you are a son of God. You are an you know, heir to royal priesthood. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a prince, the whole thing, right? And I'm like, and I'm righteous by the blood of Jesus. So I'm, I know who I am. And now I feel like God's like, okay, now I'm showing you where your ministry is going. Mm. And as a part of that, because the desire is of my heart, is to be married 
Mm. I don't I don't have wifey yet. And this is not an invitation for the DMs yeah, 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 to open yeah, yeah. Do not up. Slide I promise in our DMs, please. that is not the invitation. <laughs> but you asked me, how can the audience pray? Is because I think before I get into the full, you know, into the ministry, like I need my partner. You know what I'm saying? Like I need, I need that woman that I've been praying for to hold me down. That we can hold each other down. So that's good. I will say, um, yeah. Pray for pray for that wife that God desires for me, and 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 that and that also I would be the man who would be ready to receive such a woman, mm. you know. So mm. that would be my prayer request. Mm. Yeah. He just asked thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> the DMs are not partner, open. Hey, do not do the not DMs do the DM thing. Are please. not open. <laughs> Um, but just pray, y'all. Just, just pray, pray y'all. Please. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. I appreciate the prayers. Um, okay, what about you, Kev? What is something that, uh, uh, yeah, you feel like you've been praying for that God hasn't given you quite the answer yet? Yeah, maybe this is me needing to still mature and uh, grow in understanding, like, the communication with God. I feel like that's also part of this, so I know that it's going to take time. I've gotten small visions. I've gotten small answers, which is totally fine. Small in the eyes of whoever, right? That's opinion. So meaning, let's just say not small, but urgent things. Like something that's like one foot in front of me, God has answered me all the way. Like everything that's happening tomorrow, he answers me all the time, actually. It's amazing. It's a gift. And I'm not trying to be spoiled here. But, I, but if I have the audience, I would love prayer for a God-sized vision. Oh. There's something, I feel like there's something that's coming that I've been feeling for quite some time. And I've never gotten this vision. And I've really wanted to continue to pray for that God-sized vision mm -hmm. and really praying that not just for me, but for us and yeah, for everyone yeah, yeah. in my community, uh, really what that is. And I would love to just, um, you know, get closer to fulfilling that every day, you know, mm. so... Um, definitely while I have the community's ears, I yeah. would love for more prayer on that guys. And just, you know, I'm still very, very uh, blessed by everything we already have and already doing, Right. but I'm going to keep looking forward to that dream, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll be praying and, um, I feel like it's probably closer than you <laughs> realize. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It's closer than we realize. We'll see. <laughs> nah, but for real, we just appreciate you guys just tuning in. If you're finding this episode by itself, there's a bunch more that have come before it. So make sure you go back, like, follow, subscribe, all the good, the good things. And uh, that's it. Yeah, we, we love you guys. And, and we'll see you on the next one. We out of here. Peace. <laughs>Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like what we're doing, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and hit that five-star rating and make sure you write us a review. Follow us on all of our socials at Good Service Pod on Instagram and TikTok and make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe at Good Service Podcast. Thank you guys. Peace.